You know, we live in an amazing time of scientific discoveries and it helps us live longer and have a better quality of life. But sometimes those discoveries can be used for evil as well as good. And of course, when they are, it makes a great science fiction novel or movie plot. You know, if you think of um, Frankenstein, you know, Mary um, Shelley's novel, and it was kind of about what happens when you go against the forces of nature. Well, we do a lot of things now that may be kind of going against the forces of nature. Let me tell you about what I read about this week. So this week I learned about Xenobots and these are very tiny creatures. Um, they have been designed on a supercomputer at the University of Vermont and then actually taken frog stem cells and shaped and repurposed at Tufts University and made into these living programmable creatures. So the team at Tufts transformed these designs into life by harvesting stem cells from embryos of those African frogs. I guess it was the species Xenopus lavus, hence the name Xenobots. And these were separated into single cells and left to incubate. Then using tiny forceps and even tinier electrode, the cells were cut and joined under a microscope into a close approximation of the design specified by the University of Vermont's computer. This picture shows University of Vermont's anatomical blueprint on the left for a computer designed organism. On the right, the living organism was built entirely from frog skin, which is the green area, and heart muscle, which is the red cells. These reconfigurable organisms are shown to be able to move in a coherent fashion. Um, they explore their water environment for days or weeks, and they're powered by embryonic energy stores. So the cells then begin to work on their own. The skin cells bonded to form emergent behaviors of integrated cellular system structure, while pulsing heart muscle cells allow the robot to move on its own. Uh, they actually used the stem cells that would have created a little cilia for swimming and instead made those more as appendage for locomotion, for walking. So it's pretty amazing. Now, if these little creatures get flipped onto their back, they're just like beetles. They can't get back up. But wow, and some of them have been designed more in a donut shape. So they have a little impression in the middle there, a little pocket. And the idea is maybe in the future, they can put medicine in that little pocket. And then these creatures can deliver that medicine inside a person directly to where it's needed. This picture shows a xenobot with large hind limbs and smaller forelimbs layered with red heart muscle. Believe it or not, it's a bit smaller than a pinhead. And according to one of the scientists, these are novel living machines. They're neither a traditional robot nor a known species of animal. It is a new class of artifact, a living programmable organism. And this biologic machine looks more like a tiny blob of moving pink flesh than a robot. And so far they have built these designed organisms that can walk, swim, push, carry an object, and work together in groups. So the hope is that the xenobots eventually might be able to search out radioactive material, collect microscopic plastic um, from the oceans. Like I said, have patient-centered medicine delivery and hordes of other uses. And the amazing thing about them is they're also self-healing. They cut one almost completely in half and it just stitched itself together again. Now the other advantage other than a normal robot would be it's not made out of metal or plastic. It's all organic. So in this case, they only have enough food for seven days. So in seven days, they would just naturally decompose like dead cells. Now they're hoping that as they learn about how these cells communicate, how they move, that they will also be able to learn other things about cellular structure and maybe longevity and even regenerative medicine. Okay, but then I keep thinking, wow, great. But here's these little tiny things, right? Smaller than a pinhead. They could easily put in a slushy, a drink, whatever. You drink them down, don't know it, and oh, you've released something that is going to actually 
cut through your organs or whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of ways to deliver poison to your system that these could be used for evil. According to uh, the website, many people worry about the implications of rapid technological change and complex biological manipulations. And that fear is not unreasonable, Levin says. When we start to mess around with complex systems that we don't understand, we're going to get unintended consequences. Okay, and so that can mean you're trying to do good. Uh-oh, but something happens you didn't expect and all of a sudden you're doing bad. And he said it may all sound like something from a dystopian science fi movie, but the researchers say there is no need for alarm. The organisms come preloaded with their own food source of lipid and protein deposits, allowing them to live for a little over a week, but they can't reproduce or evolve. However, their lifespan can increase to several weeks in nutrient-rich environments. And although the supercomputer, a powerful piece of artificial intelligence, plays a big role in building these robots, it's unlikely that AI could have evil intentions. Well, I certainly hope so, but unlikely. I'm not sure what that percentage is. It sure sounds like these could be used for evil as well as good. So here's some more information on the Q&A. Couldn't someone program the AI to design weaponized CDOs? In theory, yes. At the moment though, it is difficult to see how an AI could create harmful organisms any easier than a talented biologist with bad intentions could. Despite this, we believe that as the technology matures, regulation of its use and misuse should be a high priority. Again though, the possibility of misuse is much, much smaller than what is being done with self-reproducing agents like bacteria, virus, and gene drives. Okay, did it make me feel any better when he said it could be done by evil scientists? I mean, it's always the evil scientists in the science fiction movies, right? I mean. Someone who wants to do bad can, and they can use things that were actually created for good and use them for bad. So is this a concern? Well, the other thing that worries me a little bit is some of the funding was through DARPA, you know, for the military. So they must have some reason for wanting this. Now, these Xenobots are part of a larger effort mission called the Emergent Behaviors of Integrated Cellular Systems. In 2010, the National Science Foundation provided $33 million to create a new scientific discipline for building living multicellular machines that solve real-world problems in health, security, and the environment. In 2015, funding was renewed to a tune of $25 million. The aim is to engineer living machines that can sense and process information in order to perform tasks such as detecting toxins, delivering drugs, and sequestering carbon dioxide. Now, I had to share this with you because when I was doing my research, I saw this, and it's really not completely on with the subject, but I really got a kick out of it. North Carolina State University researchers are equipping Madagascar hisking cockroaches that are fitted with electronic backpacks that can be remotely controlled. They are hoping that these cockroaches can crawl into a disaster zone and transmit data to aerial drones that could save lives. And the drones will control the cockroaches by an electronic beam, which will confine the cockroaches' movement. The new technology allows cybered cockroaches to pick up sounds with small microphones and seek out the source of the sound. I mean, that would be great if you've got trapped people, right? You've had an earthquake and people are trapped in buildings. But... Again, doesn't that sound like a science fiction movie? All these hissing cockroaches. I mean, they can be like three inches long, right? With little backpacks on them, going around, trying to, and being controlled by a, I guess it's an infrared or something, beam by the drone. So that's what con confines them to a certain area. So if someone takes out that drone, you're going to have Madagascar cockroaches, I think, kind of roaming the area. And since those aren't native to the United States or wherever else they might go, I don't think that's a good idea. But anyway, using the cockroaches as a little backpack and to be able to do this, I think is kind of amazing. So there's a lot of money going into this research and anything from using the insect with some electronic backpack to being part machine and part organic, like using the heart muscle, to actually being a whole organic organism. And sure, I mean, 
you know, as, as how I say, Timbuk3, right? The future's so bright, I just got to wear shades. And I hope it's that way. I hope all of these different things can be used for good, help save lives. But I can't help thinking that there could be the uh-oh moment and something else, those unintended consequences could happen. So I'd love to know what your thought is on the subject. Please comment below and let me know if you've heard of any more of these emergent technologies. As always, thank you very much for watching and subscribing.